Hello, welcome to this next video in making an augmented reality app using Unity. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at adding sounds to our AR project. If you found any of these videos, either this one or past ones, useful, please consider liking, subscribing, leaving a positive comment below, even a suggestion for future videos. Okay, let's get on with it. So, I'm in Unity. Uh, we can see I've got the canvas. I've made a little change to last time. I've just changed the title and I've changed the button text to say next. What I've also done is I've taken the time to create a sounds folder. And then I've used a couple of websites to make some sound effects. Now, for this sample, um, I've just used a text to speech converter so I can type words in here. I can then download them. I can get the MP3s of them. This just makes it a little bit easier. It saves me listening to my own voice over and over. Okay. Um, I've also downloaded um, Hulse the Planets, which was recorded in 1916, um, and then the recording I've got was recorded in 1959. So I'm not sure what the sorry 58. So I'm not sure what the copyright infringement for that will be, but that's what I'm going to use for the moment. Okay. So the first thing we can do is we're in our we're in our basic in our program uh, just to play some background music. If I just right click, create an empty, I'm just going to call it background. Uh, music and this is the easiest way to put some music into unity. I've got the background music empty I'm going to add a component which is just audio source. Uh, mine's a brag so I've just started typing audio source just there. Um, I can then drag um, a track onto it. So again it's clicked off so I'm just going to click back on. I'm going to drag it over to audio clip. Um, output, now nope, that's fine. Play on wake. Yep so as soon as unity fires up it'll start playing the song. Um, I'm going to bring the volume down a little bit because I don't want it to be too overwhelming. This is something to experiment with. Um, stereo is fine. Well, now, it, not in this project won't matter, but if you want the sound to come out of an object within the scene, you can hook it to an object itself, a prefab or something, and then it will change the sound levels depending on where it is in the scene. For this, it doesn't matter for me. So if I just press play now, we should be able to start hearing it actually play that background music. And it's not played. Why did it not play? What did I do wrong? Okay, it was playing. Uh, there was something that just changed. I don't know how it got ticked, but there's a little button here called mute, and it had muted the track. I'm not sure why. So there we go. We should be able to hear the music playing. And there we go. We can see the mute working. Okay, so that's how we can have a background track. Um, for the rest of this video, I am just going to mute that so that we can't hear it. Um, but it's just nice to play, and that will play right through. And if I press loop, obviously it will loop when it gets to the end of the track and just play continuously. Uh, maybe a feature you do or do not want. Okay, so going back into our scene, I've still got the original scene itself. Um, I have created an XR origin. I've still got the touch test, but I'm going to actually remove that for now because I'm going to create some new code that's going to handle all of this. Um, and just to speed things up, I've already written the bit of code, so I'm just going to drag my UI and sound on, and we'll talk through that code right now. Okay, so starting at the very top, um, I've still got using TM Pro, so that's from last time. I've still got the info box from last time, but I've now added three audio clips um, for the th for maybe three sound effects that I'm going to use, three narratives. And I've also got an audio source. This is what's going to link back to the Unity project to actually uh, create the sound player itself. Um, I've got two new variables, um, UI state, so am I currently looking at Earth, am I looking at Mars, am I looking at Saturn, am I looking at Jupiter, that's going to keep track of this. Now to make things very clear, there's much more efficient ways of handling it. I'm just going to try to keep it um, as simple a code flow as possible. I've then also got an info ID. Do I want my text 1, text 2, text 3, which you can see below. I've got Mars text one, and I've already started to write some things into it. Mars text two, and then obviously I've finally got some to do. So I want to have three separate panels of text. Again, there is more efficient ways to do this, and I made this a bit later. Okay, coming down to our start function, I've got audio equals get component audio source. So the audio source you just saw me dragging onto the background, it's the same thing, but this is going to be used for the audio clips. Okay, I've now just pinched the code directly from the touch test code, where I go, uh, if we press the left mouse button, then yep, we've pressed it. I can actually get rid of that now because we know it's working. So I'm just gonna tidy the code a little bit. I'm emitting a ray, that's not tied up. I'm emitting the ray to see where it's hit. 
um, and I've said if it's hit Mars then I'm going to say yep we are looking at the Mars planet the info ID we're looking at is 1 I'm going to copy the Mars text 1 which of course is what you see me write up here um, into the te text box and I'm going to play one shot so that was what this was doing it's going to play whatever clip I've assigned to the audio block um, so in this instance it's going to play just once Mars clip 1 and this 1F is the volume it's an F because it's expecting a flow if I wanted it a bit quieter I could go 0 0.75 and that would be turn the volume sort of 3 quarters but I'll leave it at 1 for now uh, and the same again um, for Earth, I've not set up Earth yet, that's what I'll have to come back to. Um, and, I've, and I've left the other bits of code intact where I'm destroying it. If I click it, and I'm setting the text box back to select a planet. I should really set these back as well to like UI, UI state. Um, well, I said UI state avoid, so I'm just going to copy and paste that. Save me typing a little bit. So if I do destroy it, I can just say put that back to, to void and that back to void. Okay. Um, so I've also created the next button code. So if I press next, it's going to trigger this public to make sure that we can access it in Unity. Void, it's not returning any value. Next button. So if we press the next, it's going to move over. Now I'm using um, this if UI state is Mars, whereas later I've got if UI state is Earth, and I would do the same for each one. And then I'm using a switch statement. This just saves me doing lots of ifs, because ifs can be a problem in this environment. We end up doing f, if, else if, else if, and I don't like those. That's a personal choice. So if it's one, I don't need to worry about case zero because case zero was already sort of handled up here. You know, I'm setting it to one, I'm setting the text, I'm playing the sound. So if I'm already getting to this point, uh, then it's already one. So I'm saying if it's one, then I'm going to make it two. I'm going to change the text to the second lot of text and I'm going to play the second clip, then break. What break does is break ends this switch statement so it won't go any further. Um, it sort of makes it more efficient than a whole set of if-else and else-if statements. Um, then, of course, case two, I set it to number three, and I play the text three. And I haven't got an audio clip yet, so I've just left the code ready, but I've commented it out. And default would be, well, what if it wasn't any of these? What if it wasn't one or two? I could do something else. I could put a warning message to the player. I could make it loop back round. There's all sorts of things I could do. So I would duplicate it, and, and that's the end of this code. To save you typing it, I will put this on my GitHub so you can just download it and edit it as you see fit. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I press save for any changes. Come back into Unity, wait for it to compile. Okay, so we can now see I've got my um, UI and sound, I'm not sure I just put a space just there, um, UI and sound script, and look, it's expecting the info box and the clips. So I'm going to drag the info box across. I should really name that text box, so I'm going to do that right now. It's actually bugging me a little bit. If I just call it info text, and it should automatically update in our XR origin. Yep, it's automatically updated. It's pretty clever like that. And it's still waiting for the clips. So I'm going to come down to my sounds file again. Click back on the on the XR origin, and now I can drag Mars Sound One, Mars Sound Two. Now, because I'm not trying to access Mars Clip Three, it won't affect this little program. So now, when I press play, and I've hopefully muted the sound. The background music. So I've got our planets, I can move around. If I click on Mars, and we've still got no sound playing. Okay, standard mistake. Value cannot be null. Parameter I name source. I forgot to add something. And it's all to do with this um, audio source audio. Well, I didn't add it to the actual prop to the project, so I need to come back to XR Origin. Uh, I've got all these things added, I just need to add another audio source here. Um, I could automatically add it so it would play on wake and all that, but I'm just going to turn that off because there's no sound to play. I can minimise that, I can play with the volumes. Um, I'm going to press play again to try one more time. Okay, so again, should click on Mars. Mars, our closest neighbour and possibly humanity's next home. I can press next. Oops, again, forgot to add that as well, but that's not a problem. We're going to click on our button, just like on the last lesson. I come down here, uh, objects. Well, I want to use our XR origin, so I'm going to drag that over because that's where the code is attached. Function, I want to use our UI and sound, and I want to use my next button, so it's just there. 
Uh, and again, if, so that should be absolutely fine now when I press play. I like to include these little mistakes uh, because then it's something you might forget as you're building it. So again, click on Mars. Mars. Our closest neighbor and possibly humanity's next home. I can now press next. Mars is also known as the Red Planet. Mars is named after the Roman god of war. Mars if is smaller next, than Earth with a diameter of 4,217 miles. So if we notice, it did continue to play the sound even when I press next. Um, you can stop that or we can just let it run for now. Uh, again, we'll just try and keep the code nice and easy. Okay, so that's how you can add your interactivity. So you can scroll through different planets. Obviously, I've done nothing for Earth yet, so that's not going to make any difference. Click back on Mars. Mars. It goes back. Our closest and notice it's still and possibly playing. humanity's next home. So I'll just stop that there for now. Okay, so if the sound is playing and it's going to bug you and it's bugging me, so I'm going to fix it here and now, um, the qu it's really quick and easy. We can come into our next button and we can check if it's playing. I can just write a bit more code by going if audio dot is playing. I mean, if you're not sure what something's doing, is, is press the dot and look through the options. So I can say is playing, uh, and that's basically is, is true. So I could write equals uh, true, or I can just leave it as that, and it'll just know. If audio is playing, I can just say audio dot stop. Okay, so now if I if I save that code, go back to Unity as always, and just test it. So I'm just going to click on Mars. Mars. We press next. Our Mars is also known. And we can see it stopped the audio straight away. Okay, so that's the end of this session. Again, if you found any part of this useful, please like, please subscribe. And if you've got a suggestion for a future video, please put it in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one.